Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget BCW5 on checkout. This week we're back on the Cresta. Um, we've got a lot of stuff to do today, um, partly because of things that we've discovered from the test day we were at the other day. Um, also on that, just quickly, probably in, in a few episodes ago, I said we're going to have Maddie at the track. Um, basically between filming that episode and actually going to the test day, I actually got COVID and we missed the original test day that we booked. So Maddie's currently living in Queensland, so trying to get him to come down all the time for testing is really challenging. Um, but yeah, luckily because Haltech's so well set up, we can actually do a lot of stuff remotely. Um, and probably 80% of what we wanted to do was able to be done remotely. The one thing that makes it a lot more challenging is Maddie can't actually see the car in real time what's happening. Um, so we're relying on sort of iPhone videos from the start line and stuff, and it does make it a little bit more challenging. But um, that being said, we did PB with the car, 812 at 165, so not a mile an hour PB, but it is a, a ET PB. You're probably wondering why there's no engine in here. It was actually scheduled to come out for planned maintenance. That obviously was delayed because, of co because I had COVID. Um, Empire were gonna basically give it a freshen up straight after the test day that we had planned to do. Um, but obviously we'd already fitted the new turbo, so I wanted to still get a test day in before pulling it apart and giving it a freshen up. Um, so Omar's actually got the engine right now. He's, pull he's pulled it apart last night. Uh, so yeah, hopefully by the end of the week in real time, we'll have the engine in. Um, I'm not gonna film fitting it because you guys have seen the engine go in and out of this car multiple times. Um, and for all of you guys that have been screaming out for me to paint the underside of the bonnet, the reason the bonnet's not on the car is because it's had a panel beater getting painted. Um, we're not painting the top side of it, but we are gonna paint the bottom side to match the bay because the bay is actually not the factory color. It's a, a brighter white from a Q7. But yeah, we're gonna be diving into a bit of electrical stuff today. So we've got uh, a laser ride height center to, sensor to go in the front, a shock travel sensor to go in the rear. Uh, we've also got a gear position sensor to go on the side of the transmission. We've also got an M&M transmission shifter, which is air shifted. So we are crossing to the dark side of air shifting. Uh, we've got a Motion Raceworks CO2 kit. Um, I didn't actually get that one direct from Motion. I bought it from Marketplace as a brand new secondhand item and saved, I'm pretty sure I saved about $500 buying it secondhand, even though it was brand new, never fitted. So um, there's plenty of bargains to be had online if you shop around. I've also actually bought a few other things lately that have saved us a stack of money off Marketplace compared to buying them new. So. Um, yeah, definitely if you're looking around for stuff, while I 100% support retailers, sometimes you can score a good bargain. Um, we're also setting the car up for a uh, Haltech PD16. So I'm basically gonna be running all the wires for all the new sensors into the cabin. And then we're actually gonna be going to Haltech. And on Haltech's channel, we're gonna be installing the PD16. Uh, so yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that in future. But we're gonna dive on in. We're gonna start doing all the sensors first because there's gonna be a little bit of fabrication. Um, I've also got to put the shifter in the car so we can get our cable links and stuff correct. And we're also going to have to cut the center console up a bit, I think. Um, I do have another center console coming for the car, but it may not get here in time for America. So we're going to keep cutting that one up because it's already hacked for the old shifter anyway. Um, but eventually I would like to cut it really neatly and make an infill panel. And um, <clears throat> yeah, going forward, we're just going to try and tidy a lot of little things up in the car. We're starting at the back of the car this morning. We're gonna do our rear uh, shock travel sensor. Uh, it's worth noting that if you do go fitting uh, these mounting nuts like we're gonna to use today, that you need to use thread locker on the, on the thread. Uh, if you're replacing the existing nylock nut, um, we are gonna do that because I don't wanna go making a Christmas tree and building it too wide. We could have just screwed this on because the bolt is quite long in addition to the existing nylock, uh, but I don't wanna make it too wide at the top um, typically when you're doing a shock travel sensor install, you just use two of these nuts. But unfortunately, the way that we've had to install these shocks originally on the Cresta, one bolt goes across the car and the top bolt actually goes in line with the car. So that would basically mean the shock travel sensor is going to get bent, which it's just not going to work. So uh, yeah, keep in mind if you're going to use these and you're replacing a nylock to use some sort of thread locker. Uh, we're using Permatex Red today, so we'll uh, chuck a bit on and get it sorted.
in typical Benny fashion, I've actually ordered the wrong length sensor for the back. So what I've actually done is substituted the gear position sensor for the rear uh, travel sensor purely to make the tab and also to get our wire length correct. Uh, so then when we go to Haltech and do the PDM install, we can actually just put the sensor in on the day and the wire will already be here. I put a mark on the floor to show our plug link. So when I run that loom, I can actually just make it to that point. Should make it fairly simple, but uh, yeah, a little bit, little bit annoying on my part, um, but yeah, we'll get it sorted. And, and at least this mounting lug is on and the tabs are also tacked to the body. The welding's not the best because it's very hard to actually get in there, but it's gonna hold them on and it'll be fine. And I did it, so whatever. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna keep on going now. We're gonna do the gear position sensor. So we've got to the point where the sensor's mounted. We've checked our full, uh, full uh, extension and full compression of the sensor. Um, it's not actually bottoming out on the, on the sensor body, but it is very close. Um, the one thing that is worth checking is bind in your um, spherical joints. And this particular bracket, the way I've originally designed it, actually does bind. Because I've got quite a lot of um, length in the lever here, it does actually bind on the, on the rose joint. So what I'm gonna do is actually just trim that out and tidy it up so that we're not getting any interference there. There's still plenty of material and this strap is actually three mil stainless. So there's plenty of, of material strength there, but we are gonna tidy it up a little bit and just make it so that it's not gonna bind on the sensor. So we can uh, have it functioning reliably long-term and not damage either the sensor or the shifter. Hey, we arrived. That was quick. That was, oh God. <laughs> Wiring people would be having a heart attack right about now.
We've got most of our electrical stuff done, uh, save for a few things with the shifter. Uh, so we've got all of our wiring run out to our sensors. We've got our power supply for our uh, PDM now also run inside to the car. Um, interestingly, the, power, the PDM doesn't actually have a large ground strap like the Nexus does, um, but we've got that run through. Um, so now we're pretty much gonna start fitting the shifter and doing all the other electrical stuff, uh, as well as fitting our CO2 bottle and plumbing that up. So uh, yeah, still plenty to come and we keep chipping away. Um, but yeah, all the sensors have gone in pretty well. Um, we do need to get, as I previously mentioned, another rear ride height sensor because the one I ordered was the wrong length. Um, but the gear shift position sensor sorted pretty well. So uh, yeah, we'll keep on trucking. I didn't realize how big this center console was. Wow, air temp sensor. We don't even use that anymore. Maybe I should clean this out while I'm here. It'd probably go faster if I clean the glove box out. The center console even. Wow. Dividers and the padlock I don't have a key for. I don't even know what that is. I wonder if that was for Charleston Performance. So we've come to the point in the day where we're plumbing stuff again. Uh, I do love me a good bit of AN plumbing. So we're gonna take some Dash 3 and plumb our CO2 shifting system. So we've got the CO2 RAM that's already comes pre-mounted in the shifter uh, from m and I have, however, converted to AN because it does have push lock, um, just like air tube like you'd use in a truck brake system. Um, while it's probably fine, I've got this AN stuff, so I'd much rather use it. And I'm actually going to use one of these little Raceworks quick connect on the cylinder so that we can actually take the cylinder, the reg, and everything out of the car uh, for the street, primarily just to actually give the passenger a bit more foot room. The bracket will stay on the cage, but we can actually fold the bracket all the way back against the firewall, so it doesn't really impede on your leg room. Um, in saying that, it's not too bad. I'm actually pretty happy with the position there. I was going to put it on the main hoop uh, in the back of the car, but uh, that being said, I think this is actually a better position and we can also mount our shift solenoid under the dash as well. Uh, there's already a few studs on the firewall from where the heater box used to mount. So yeah, just making use of what's already there and yeah, we should have this plumbed up pretty quick because one of the things I really like about this dash three line, also dash four, is you can actually just cut it with some special cutters. So you don't have to get it out, cut it with a grinder. You can basically just be in the car and plumb the whole thing as you go. Um, so yeah, basically this is pretty much gonna be us for the day with the plumbing. I'll probably just fiddle around with the console because you guys don't really need to see me butchering a console with an angle grinder. Um, but yeah, that being said, we'll uh, chip along with this plumbing because it's probably still a solid hour in making these AN lines. So less talking, more doing. Well, today's been a bit challenging. It's uh, definitely taken a lot of time to do not a lot of jobs. Um, that being said, we have got all of our sensors mounted. We've got all of our cabling run all the way into the cabin, ready to be terminated into the PD-16. We've got all of our uh, CO2 system plumbed, mounted. Uh, the reverse lights and the neutral switch are wired up now. Our trans brake button is wired up now. Um, the shifter cables run. Don't know if I've already mentioned that, but it's all, the shifter works perfectly, actually. I was really surprised how easy that was to set up and get it in super easily. 
A um, few things to do for me tomorrow, which we're not going to film because it's boring. It's trim cutting and stuff. Um, I still need to run the alternator cable front to back because we do have a charging issue. We don't notice that at the track. It was really obvious. Uh, I think what we've got is a, a high resistance in the cable somewhere. Um, it's only a four gauge cable as well. So being that we're charging from the front to the back of the car, because obviously the, boot, the battery is in the boot, um, I'm going to upgrade that to, to two gauge cable. Um, it may be overkill, but it's actually no, it's going to be no harm other than a bit more weight and, and it's going to be minimal at, at best. So I'd much prefer to have a uh, more functional charging system than save 50 grams. Um, we've also got a new alternator, which I've already had test fitted before we pulled the engine out. I've rewired the charge light and I've actually just got a Motion Raceworks underdrive pulley uh, for the alternator, which is actually an LS item. Um, but I had a LS alternator and I pulled my barrel alternator pulley off and measured the back side of it and the belt width and the offset. They're all exactly the same. So all things going well, that motion pulley will go straight onto the barrel alternator. And then we'll have underdrive because at high RPM is when the alternators seem to fail. And that was what, was, what we were seeing uh, with the data. The more RPM we gave it, the actually the less charge we'd get. So effectively, we're spinning it too fast. So the underdrive pulley, in addition to the crank underdrive pulley, should slow the alternator down about 35%, um, which at idle is not great. Um, so that's also one thing to keep in mind. If you're double underdriving your alternator, you may have charging issues at idle. Um, but... This thing's not really at idle very much, so I don't think it's going to be a concern. Um, so yeah, we've definitely ticked a lot of boxes off. I don't love electrical, but we've, it needs to be done. So I'm glad that we've kind of chewed through it. Um, next time you guys see this, we'll actually be on the Haltech channel installing the PD-16 with Scotty. Um, so yeah, that's going to be pretty exciting. So stay tuned for that. We'll leave a link when that video is up. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.